once again you welcome back to the online lesson and we are going to continue with our lessons on trigonometry in our previous lesson we we're actually looking at what trigonometry is and then we also talked about the values of the trig ratios of some special angles like 30 degrees 45 degrees and then 60 degrees and then we are using this idea to find out the behavior of all the trig ratios in their respective quadrants when it comes to general angles all together so in our previous lesson we just considered angles in the first quadrant and then second quadrant and then second quadrant sorry so we looked at angles in the first quadrant and second quadrant so we realized that angles in the first quadrant because they lie between 0 degrees and then 90 degrees the behavior of all the trig ratios was that the values of those angles will be positive and i believe you also saw that fancy now i wasn't here for the um the 60 degrees those ones but i think i'm following you think you're following okay no problem so we realized that they were all positive this let me just go back a little so that you just also follow through so here it is here it is we say that trig ratios are angles measured or trig ratios when it comes to trigonometry angles are measured from the positive x axis in the anti clockwise direction and there's a reason for that whilst when it comes to measuring angles from the positive x axis in the clockwise direction it represents negative angles that's what we talked about in our previous lesson and then we're looking at the trig ratio for general angles altogether that is from zero degrees all the way to 360 degrees so it means if you look at the interval that i've written here then it means the angles should actually um um be positive they are all positive angles so it means our angles are going to measure from the positive x axis in the anti-clockwise direction can i move on yes sir so in this case before that we looked at trig ratio for special angles such as 30 degrees 60 degrees 45 degrees and then we realized that um per the idea of pythagoras and then triangle right angle triangles we deduce these ratios sine 60 was root 3 over 2 cos 60 was half then 60 was root 3 on 1 which is the same as root 3 and these are specific angles for these uh, specific ratio for these specific or special angles and that is 60 degrees for that matter 30 degrees it is half sine 30 is, th uh, is half cos 30 is root 3 on 2 and 30 is root 3 on 3 and if you check your calculator all these values have been programmed onto the calculator because they are specific and because of that we apply it in solving questions and then we came to 45 degrees how those values were deduced so 45 degrees sine 45 is root 2 on 2 cos 45 is root 2 on 2 and then time 45 is 1 so they are specific angles and I show them how it came about. Can I move on? So we are using this angles idea to find the values for general angles all together. That is between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. So it means we are going through first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. So we took first, first, and then second quadrant to find out their values the behavior of their values and we said that 
when you consider the Cartesian plane, that is the xy plane, you realize that when you divide it into the four quadrants, you have the positive x as a side, positive y as a side, negative x as it, as well as negative y as a side. Are you following? Yes, sir. So if you have your terminal line or if you have your angle situated between the x and y positives, then it means that your x coordinate will be positive, your y coordinate will also be positive at the same time. If we are taking the hypotenuse to be r, that is going to be positive at all time. Because per Pythagoras, if you have your your um, x and y coordinates, and then you find the hypotenuse, then r is going to be equal to square root of positive x squared, positive y squared, and that will give you a positive r value. So for the hypotenuse, it's always going to be a positive value. I, I made mention of that in our previous video, but because you are not here, that's why I'm repeating it for you. When even it comes to the the second quadrant for which you may have y as positive and x as negative when you find the r value then it means you are still going to get positive because negative x all squared will become a positive value i hope you agree yes sir and then positive y all squared will still be positive so at the end of the day the radio um the r value is going to be positive at all time so we worked through the first and second quadrant and we realized that when you find any angle within the first quadrant, the answers are always going to be positive because both X and Y values are positive. So if theta is 30 degrees, which we've already done it early on, sine 30 is going to be half, cos 30 is going to be root 3 on 2, which, is, which are all positive values if you look at them. They are all positive values. So in the first quadrant, meaning talking about angles between 0 degrees and 90 degrees, all the trig ratios are positive there. There is no way any of the trig ratio will be a negative number. They will become a positive number altogether. Then we came on to the second quadrant. So second quadrant, then we are looking at angles between 90 degrees and then 180 degrees. So it means our terminal line must lie within the second quadrant, which is here. So as I said, if we introduce the terminal line, the angle towards the x axis, you realize that the angle theta and y will be opposite. The y value will be positive because you know it's a vertical axis, and the vertical axis for y is positive within this quadrant. But when it comes to the horizontal axis for x, what type of value do we have there? So a negative. A negative value. So if it's a negative value, then it means when you are finding sine, cos, and tan of these ratios within this quadrant, some of them may be positive, others may be negative. So this is what we realize here. If I find sine of theta, sine theta is supposed to be the opposite value over the hypotenuse remember r hypotenuse has been labeled as r so opposite value is what value do we have here y and then the r value is the hypotenuse so sine of theta the expression y over r is a positive number over another positive number so it means the whole ratio is going to be a positive value do you agree to that yes sir good let's come to cos cos of theta cos of theta is going to be the adjacent side of theta which is what expression do we have there neck x neck x and then the hypotenuse is what value r r so it's going to be a negative value over a positive value and the whole expression becomes what type of value Negative value. negative value so it tells you that in the second quadrant cause of any angle in the second quadrant is a negative value altogether 
it's a negative value altogether. You see, we are saying we are looking at the behavior of all the trig ratios within the general angle system. So, first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth. We are going to investigate all of them because when you know that, it becomes easier for you to write their ratios easily. Coming to tan of coming to tan of theta within the second quadrant is going to be the opposite side over the adjacent side. Opposite side, we've seen it as y, adjacent side is neg x. So it means when you divide a positive value by a negative value, the whole expression becomes negative. So it concludes that tan of any angle within the second quadrant is also automatically a negative number. So we started these investigations and we said what might be might be the theta value the theta value should lie between 90 degrees and 180 degrees so perfect examples of those values includes 150 degrees 120 degrees 135 i can write more but i chose these numbers for the fact that there are some special angles in these numbers there are some special angles in these numbers and what are the special angles for 150 degrees, the special angle in 150 degrees is 30 degrees. Because when you add 30 degrees to 150, you are going to get what value? So 180. 180. So it means that when you find sine of 150, it will be equivalent to sine of 30. When you find sine of 120, what will be its equivalent in terms of special angle? Um, 60. 60. Yes, I intentionally did not tell you. I wanted you to think about it. Remember, I said over here when you add that special angle to 150, it gives you 180. So, what would be 135? The special angle in that? 30. 45. Perfect. So, you have one Alewa with me. So, I'll get you Alewa for being able to get all right. So we have 45 degrees in this, we have 60 degrees in that, and then we have 30 degrees in this. So it tells you that when you find sine of 150 in this quadrant, automatically is the same as sine of 30. And because you are talking about sine and 150 finds itself in the second quadrant, then automatically we are expecting the ratio to be a positive number. Likewise, sine of 60 is the same as sine of 120, and it must be a positive number because 120 degrees is an angle in the second quadrant. Then sine of 135 is the same as sine of 45, and it's supposed to be a positive angle within the second quadrant when it comes to sine ratio. Are you with me? Yes, sir. And hence... When it comes to the others, meaning the cos and then the tan, when you find cos of 150, cos of 120, cos of 135, straight ahead, you should know that that gives you a negative angle. Sorry, that gives you a negative ratio altogether. And hence, cos of 150 will be equivalent to cos of 30. Likewise, cos of 120 will be equivalent to cos of 60. Likewise, cos of 135 will be equivalent to cos of 45. And, and, and we said that this is how you can get the answers. This is how you can get the answers. So, if the angle finds itself, so watch this here. I wrote this expression down. Have you seen the one that I've written in the, the brown marker? I've written 180 minus theta, right? Good. So this is what we, we finally said there. Let me use a yellow marker to conclude on that. Let's say if I'm asked to find cos of 150 degrees, because I want to use the idea of special angles, this is going to be the same as now I have to investigate what type of angle 150. 150 lies in the second quadrant. So it automatically is supposed to be a negative number altogether. And it must be equivalent to cos of 180 minus um, 
150 because our theta value is 150 and hence that is going to give us negative cos of 30 and what did we early on learn about cos 30 cos 30 is the same as root 3 on 2 so cos 30 being root 3 on 2 so it will give us negative root 3 on 2 please are you okay yes sir all right any question before i move on to the third and fourth quadrants any question do we have others joining please, us does it make that? Mm -hmm. yeah they've joined okay so whom do i have on board all right i'll deduct one aliwa from each of them uh present i will actually do that because they were late okay so you were wanted to ask a question i'm listening yes sir so, so it's like it's so and that cos theta and tan theta in the second quadrant is always negative right exactly cos theta tan theta in the second quadrant they are always going to be negative they are always yes, going sir, to be thank you. all right so um Emanuela, Kiki, and others, you are all welcome. We are going to continue with our lesson um, on the trig ratios, the behavior of all the trig ratios within the quadrant system. All right, so moving forward, moving forward, as I said, you are already welcome. We are moving on to the third quadrant. So we are considering the third quadrant. That's what I want us to consider today the third quadrant to third quadrant and when we consider the third quadrant then it means we are looking at angles between 180 degrees less than theta and less than 270 degrees therefore if i sketch my cartesian plane undo it's 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 slanted when i sketch my cartesian plane then it means i have my positive y axis positive x axis negative x axis and negative y axis with the arrows at the ends even at just one side it's okay then our terminal line must be in the third quadrant but remember our acute angle should be found towards the x axis so it means this is where our theta value the special um, the acute angle theta must be found in here but in terms of general angle the general angle must be read all the way from the positive x axis all to that so in terms of general angle what do you think will be the general angle? Yes, it will be theta. What will be the general angle, please? Because remember, what is the full angle from positive x axis to the negative x axis? No. What is, what what is the full angle from positive? Is what? One eighty. One eighty. And then remember, theta has been added to it. So, what will be the general angle altogether? It is 180 plus, plus theta. Because remember, it includes the theta angle that I've shown here. That will be the general angle. But the special angle will just be theta, which is seen here okay so with this diagram drawn then it means we can generate a right angle triangle towards the x axis so introducing a right angle towards the x axis we are going to have it as this hence let us put the dimensions there what would be the dimension on the horizontal axis what type of value do we have on the horizontal axis please
negative value. So it's a negative x value. How about the vertical axis? What type of value do we have there? Negative y value. So negative y. So it means that our x and y values are both negative. And the opposite side of theta is what value do we have there? Opposite side of theta. What value do we have there? So neg y. Neg y. Then the adjacent is neg x. So we need to know our hypotenuse. And remember, we are using R to represent our hypotenuse. What have we stated about the hypotenuse? What type of value will it be always? Positive. So it's going to be positive R. Okay. Let us generate the trig ratios within this right angle triangle. Therefore, let's begin with sine. Sine of theta will be equal to opposite side is negative y over hypotenuse, which is r. Give me cos of theta within that quadrant. What are we going to obtain? Sir, please. Um, negative x over r. And then finally, tan of theta, Emanuela, what are you getting? Is she there? This is that. Tan of theta, what are you obtaining from that ratio here? This will be negative by over. That is going to be... What is the ratio for tan? So like... What is the tan ratio definition? What is the ratio? What is the definition for tan? The opposite of adjacent. Opposite of adjacent. So within this quadrant system or within this right angle triangle that I've drawn here, what will be the tan ratio for theta? What will it be? Remember, we've drawn a right angle triangle. So what will it be? Finding the tan ratio. Neg y over neg x. So it's going to be neg y over neg x. And hence, neg y over neg s can be simplified to become what? Y over x. Y over x. So this is what generally any angle that finds itself within the third quadrant, when you work out a trig ratio, the basic trig ratio, these are the kind of values you must obtain generally. So what are they? When you find sign of any angle which lies in the third quadrant, automatically, what type of value are we supposed to obtain? A negative value. A negative value, straight ahead. For sign. For cause, it must also be what type of value? A negative value. Likewise, for tan, what type of value are you expecting? A positive value. A positive value. So. With what we have right now, it means that when you find any angle for sine, cos, and tan, generally, it is only tan that is going to be positive, but the rest are all going to be what? Negative. And we can investigate that. Remember, we have some angles like... Uh, yes, please. Please, is anybody recording? Actually, I told you that whenever we start the lesson, you should record. That's what I told you. Sir, please, I'm, I'm, I'm recording. All right, thank you. Yes, I didn't come in early, that's why. All right. All right, so let's continue. So as I was saying, the behavior of all the trig ratios in the third quadrant are negative, except what? Tan which must be a positive number. So we can investigate with some angles. And what angles can we look at? Now, remember, here we have 
generally the angle to be 180 plus theta so we have some special angles like 30 45 and 60. so when we add 30 to 180 we can have an angle like 210 to be some special angle in the third quadrant which its value is uh, fixed then we can add 45 to 180 that is going to give us 225 and then we add for the um 180 and 60 and that will give us 240. so if i'm considering these angles to be angles within the third quadrant and you are testified to that all these values are between 180 and 270 none of them lies below that if i find sine of 210 it should be equivalent to a particular special angle and that special angle must be sine of 30 degrees but i must ask myself 210 degrees which quadrant does it find itself it finds itself in the third quadrant and if it finds itself in the third quadrant what is the behavior of sign in the third quadrant please can you tell me the answer what's the behavior of sign in the third quadrant sign so, so 30 one over two or something like that. no i'm saying what's the behavior of sign in the third quadrant Sir, please, is it a negative value? It's negative. It's a negative value. So it means that sine 210 must be negative of sine of 30. Again, cos 210 degrees must be equivalent to cos of 30 degrees because that is a special angle we can get in. 210 hence what is the behavior of course in the third quadrant yes what's the behavior negative it's also negative so it means cos 210 must be equivalent to negative cos 30 then tan of 210 degrees must be equal to what it must be equivalent to tan of 30 but what is the behavior of tan in the third quadrant from what we've investigated here what is its behavior so it's a positive value it's a positive value so it means tan 210 it's equal to tan of 30 because it's also a positive value altogether so we can conclude that the behavior of all the three ratios in the third quadrant are negative except tan tan is the only trig ratio which is positive in the third quadrant and you apply it in solving questions to make it easy that's all please are you with me any question or any confusion so that i may clarify things for everyone to understand where you don't get it let me know and let me help you out that means i'm good you are good yes please um kiki emanuela and ku if you are lost please let me help you because I want each and everyone to understand it very well. Because when I start putting the questions there, you need to be able to take a decision and get it right. And yeah, it's open. Exactly. You're okay. All right. So if we are all okay, then it means we are moving on to the fourth quadrant. So far, we've seen that in the first quadrant, all the trig ratios are positive. In the second quadrant, which is between 90, less than theta, and less than 180 degrees, it is only sine that is positive when it comes to the third quadrant it's just here between 180 and 
270 degrees, it is only tan that is positive. The rest are negative. So let's go to the last one. Seven, Wait, I have a question. All right, I'm listening. Sir, sir, please, for the second quadrant, why didn't you make it 90 degrees plus theta? But we made it 180 minus theta. All right. We made it 180 minus theta because when I go to the second quadrant diagram, you realize that the theta value was drawn towards the x axis. Look at it. It was drawn towards the x axis. All the angles must be drawn towards the x axis. If you make it 90 plus theta, then it means your theta value has been drawn towards the y axis, which is not right. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so going forward, we are looking at the last quadrant, which is the fourth quadrant. So the fourth quadrant, let me just write it short because you understand, fourth quadrant. So per the fourth quadrant, then it means you are looking at angles between 270 degrees less than theta and less than 360 degrees. That's the kind of angles we are looking at. And hence, those angles are positive angles as well. So per our quadrant system, we have y positive, x positive, we have y negative, and then x negative there. So our terminal line must be here in the fourth quadrant. But remember, our theta value must be introduced to us where? The x axis. So we have theta value here. But general angle must always be read from the, let me use the brown color, must be read from the positive x axis in the anti clockwise direction until it meets the terminal line. So general angle should actually be what type of value? Yes. How do we get the general angle reading? Because we've introduced theta here. So what would be the general angle value? How would you read it? So 360 minus theta. Exactly. 360 minus theta. That's the exact value for that. Good. So that's the general angle. Okay. So let's introduce a right angle triangle towards the x axis. So we have it here. And therefore, you should help me out. What would be the type of value on the horizontal axis in terms of x? A positive one. So positive x. Vertical axis? Negative y. Negative y. Therefore, let us find the trig ratios within this right angle triangle. Remember, our opposite value is what value? Neg y. The adjacent is x positive. But the um, hypotenuse is still going to be R, right? Yes, sir. So we are finding sine of theta within that quadrant. The opposite side is negative Y over positive X. So automatically, that ratio is what type of value? Sir, I don't know over R. Oh, sorry. 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 So R. So what type of value do we have there? A negative value. A negative ratio. And therefore, cos of theta will be adjacent side is positive x over R. So what type of value do you have for the ratio? A positive. Positive. Then tan of theta will be equal to the opposite side, which is negative y over the adjacent side, which is positive x. So what type of ratio are we having? A negative. Negative. So what's our conclusion here? What's the behavior of cos in the fourth quadrant? Cos is positive. Then the rest are? Negative. That is all. That's the conclusion here. That's the conclusion here. So you can investigate from your calculator and you can also use some special angles to do so and you get those values so if i start we can have special angles like um 300 degrees there we can also have 
um, 315 there then we can equally have um, 330 there how did I get these ones I considered 60 degrees so when I subtract 60 degrees from 360 I'll get 300 then 315 how did I get that when I subtract um, 45 degrees from 360 degrees I'll get 315 and then when I subtract this here will be 30 degrees when I subtract 30 degrees from 360, I'll get 330. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So it means the value of three sine of 300 degrees will be equivalent to negative of sine of 60 degrees. Why did I write this? Because I've understood the whole concept that sine 300 because 300 degrees finds itself in the fourth quadrant, it's going to be a negative sign. Then again, 300 is equivalent to 60 degrees when it comes to the special angle property. Again, if I find cos of 300 degrees, I'm going to get it as cos of 60 degrees. And the same explanation goes as that. 300 degrees finds itself in the fourth quadrant. And then again, cos in the fourth quadrant is positive. So it means I'm going to have a positive ratio here. And then 300 is equivalent to 60 degrees when it comes to the special angle property. And therefore, cos 300 is the same as cos 60. Then finally, tan of 300 degrees must be equal to negative tan of what? Sixty degrees. That's all. Please, are you all following? Sir, please. Um, yes. What are the figures? I mean, the. Oh, the actual the... figures. Yes. The actual figures. What did we say? Sign sixty was early on. Sin 60 was root 3 on 2. So it means finally the answer here must be negative root 3 on 2. Then over here, cos of 60 degrees must be equal to half. Are you with me? Yes, sir. And then when we come to tan of 60, tan of 60 must give us that is what value root 3 so it means we expect here to be negative root 3 and if you program on your calculator you realize that tan 300 is negative root 3 automatically cos 300 is half and then sine 300 is negative root 3 on 2 can you verify that from your calculator Sure. all right and this is the concept i want you to understand so conclusion on the general angles when you have your quadrant system all the trig ratios are positive in the first quadrant the sine ratio is positive in the second quadrant. The tan ratio is positive in the third quadrant. And then the cos ratio is positive in the fourth quadrant. And that's how the behaviors are. Please, are we okay? Looking at the positive, yeah. I'm just the positive makes it very easy, you know. If the positive is this, the rest are negative. That's all, oh, okay, sir. Yeah, okay, sir. that's why I'm just putting the positives there for you to 
um, get it right. All right, I have a question here I want us to consider. And it involves what we are just doing. So it says, without using tables or calculator, without using tables or calculator, without using tables or calculator, find the values of the following, leaving your answer in the simplified form. So we are using the idea we've just learned to work out this question. Without using tables or calculator, find the values of the following in their simplified form. So I have my first question as sine of 135 degrees. Question number two as cos of 240 degrees. Question number three, I'm compounding it, is tan of 300 minus tan of 150 all divided by tan of 120 then plus tan of 150 so we are doing it together in the first place because you are asked not to use calculator it means you should know your special angles and the behavior of all the angles within the quadrant system in terms of their ratios are you with me are you with me yes sir so getting our solution for sine of 135 then we must ask ourselves the angle 135 degrees which quadrant will it find itself? That's the first question we must ask ourselves. Which quadrant, please? Sir, please, second quadrant. Second quadrant. Then again, if that is the angle found in the second quadrant, what is the behavior of sine in the second quadrant? So it's positive. It's positive. So straight ahead, you should know that the answer you are going to obtain must be a positive value for 135. Then the second question you must ask yourself is this. Which special angle can we get in 135? And you know the special angles we talked about. We have the 30, we have the 60, and then we have the 45. So which special angle can we get here? Sir, please, the 45. It's the 45. So in other words, this is how you must write it. This is going to be the same as sine of 180 minus 45 degrees oh sorry minus 135 degrees because that's the 45 you are interested in minus the 145 135 sorry so this is going to give us sine of 45 and sine of 45 we realize that it is what value? It is root 2 on 2. Please, are we okay? Yes, sir. All right. Let's come to cos of 240. So, cos of 240 degrees, yes, what are we thinking about? So the third quadrant we are looking at the third quadrant what is the behavior of cos in the third quadrant so it's negative it's negative and what special angle are we obtaining from cos 40 a uh, cos 240 in the third quadrant 
for 30. Okay, so we are expecting 30 degrees. So that is going to be actually negative cos of what value? 240 minus 180 degrees. Because that's a special angle we are going to obtain. We are going to obtain negative of cos of 30 degrees. Do you agree? Sir. Yes. Is 240 minus 180. 240 minus 180 for the fact that in the third quadrant, I just want the special angle to obtain. So I said that what special angle are we expecting? And you told me 30 degrees. So how can we get a 30 degrees? We just simply subtract the 180 from the 240 so that we we'll end up getting the 30 degrees. Or either than that, then you must write it as. 180 plus 30 degrees so that it will give you the 240 as the general angle altogether. I wanted only to obtain. Yeah, so you can write 270 minus 240 because that's what I did. You wrote 270 minus. Minus 240. So here it is. Watch. If you wrote 270 minus 240, this is what you mean. If I have. Hold on. I want you to get your definition right. If I have the quadrant system and I introduce my terminal line here and then you wrote 270. Remember, if you talk about 270 degrees, then you are coming all the way from the positive x axis anticlockwise to the south pole right yeah. to the south pole right so it means that is giving me 270 and you said 270 minus 240 giving us one uh, the 30 degrees yes you are right but watch it means 270 minus 240 the 30 degrees you are talking about, then it means it is here. Have you seen it? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. So it means that it wouldn't be right for you to tell me that the 240, the 30 degrees will be there. But what must it be? It must be, remember the 240 degrees must be read from the positive exercises all the way to the terminal line so it means the 240 is just here so how can we get the acute angle here if we want only the acute angle we must subtract 180 from the 240 so that we we'll get the acute angle here because the acute angle must always be introduced towards the positive x axis please am i clear yes, sir. all right so in other words what would be the final answer sir. yes please Please, I'm confused. Why are you confused? Please, is it negative 240 minus 180 or 240 minus 180? It is 240 minus 180. And we had 30. Yes. Or oh, what are you getting? You, if for me, I calculated, I got um 60. Hold on. Two forty minus, minus one eighty. Oh, me are not. We get sixty. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. So it must be 60 degrees. All right. So in other words, cos of 60, what have we realized cos 60 is? Cos 60 is half. So it means that we are going to obtain negative of half. And if you want to be smart enough to check whether your answer is right, you can check directly. Cos 240. Check cos 240 from your calculator 
What are you obtaining, please? One two. Yes, which is negative half. And that is the answer we've obtained here. Please, are we okay? Yes, sir. But sir, I feel like I'll struggle with the first part. The first part as in getting the acute angle. Yes. The acute angle, as I said, you should know how many turns you've made and know where you, it, it, then your problem is where to introduce the angle towards. I always say that the angle must be introduced towards the x axis. So it means that if you've gone through a complete turn with an extra angle, to get that extra angle, subtract part of the complete turn from what do you know, and then you get your special angle coming on board. Sir? Yes. Why you add 240 and 60? Yes. You yes. add 240 and 180. And 180. Uh, sorry. 60 and 180. You get 240. 60 and 180. Oh. You get 240. Okay. Because we've not changed it. It's equivalent. So you've not changed anything. Are we okay? Please, are we all on the same page before I move on to the last question? Yes, please. Okay. So, going to the last question, I don't have room, so let me copy and move it to another page so that we do it there. So, we are working it out here. You can see that this question is so broad. And therefore, you need to do it bits and then get your response to that. So, the question now is, watch. I'm going to do it systematically, but I want you to practice so that you don't do all those communities, communities, so that you can go straight ahead and get your answers. In the first place, talking about 300 degrees. Remember, we have 300, we have 150, we have 2, 120, and then we have 150 again. So, these are the angles that we have to get their corresponding um, special angle. So let me take it bit by bit for all of us to get it clear. If I draw my quadrant system, I'm using just this to get a 300. 300 degrees will be read from the positive x axis. Oh, sorry. From the positive x axis in the anti clockwise direction until it gets into 300 is in the fourth quadrant so this is where we have the 300 and therefore having our 300 here then the question is how do we get the acute angle the acute angle must be introduced towards the x axis right so the acute angle must be here right yes sir so how do we get the acute angle then it must be 360 degrees minus 300 degrees right then we'll get the acute angle in it please am i clear yes, sir. all right so it means we are going to obtain tan of 300 as the same as tan of 360 minus what value 300 degrees right but what is the behavior of tan in the fourth quadrant? What are we obtaining? So, negative. so it's going to be negative of tan of 360 minus 300. And the final answer is supposed to be negative tan 60. So it means the tan 300 is negative tan 60. Let me go to the other angle, 150 degrees. So for 150 degrees, if you draw the quadrant system, 150 degrees will find itself in the second quadrant. Therefore, the acute angle, as we know, 
must be introduced towards the x axis. So, what acute angle must we obtain to help us get the same answer as tan 150? Because tan 150 will be read from the positive x axis until it gets to the terminal line. So, how do we get the acute angle here? Yes, how do we get the acute angle, please? Okay, so 180 minus 150 will give us the acute angle. Will give us the acute angle. So in other words, we have it as 180 minus 150, and that will give us the acute angle, and the acute angle is 30. Therefore, when we consider tan of 150 degrees, its corresponding acute angle must be obtained as a result of tan of 180 minus 150 degrees. But what is the behavior of tan in the second quadrant? It's negative. So we negate it. And hence it to be negative tan of 30 degrees. So it means tan 150 is the same as negative tan 30 degrees. Then, then we have 120. 120 is the last one. So 120 degrees is also going to find itself in the second quadrant again. So therefore, straight ahead, can you quote the direct acute angle in 120 degrees, please? Sixty. It's 60 degrees. So it means tan of 120 degrees. How do we get a 60 degrees? It can be obtained as a result of tan of 180 minus the 120 degrees. But tan is negative still in the second quadrant. So you obtain negative tan 60 degrees. So being able to come up with all these expressions as side work, then you can substitute them directly. So tan 300 was seen as negative tan of 60 degrees. Then minus into brackets, tan of 150 degrees has been seen as negative tan of 30 degrees. All divided by tan of 120 degrees has been seen as negative tan of 60 degrees. Then finally, we have plus tan of 150 has already been seen as negative tan of 30 degrees. My people, are you with me? Oh, yeah. I hope no one is lost. No, All right. Yeah, you are coping. I understand. You'll be fine. You, all that it takes is you knowing the acute angles and how to get them easily. Okay, sir. So, tan of 60, we did it early on. What did we observe tan 60 to be? Tan 60, what, what value? That was root 3. Root three. So, in other words, we have negative root 3. And this will become a positive number because negative multiplying negative will be positive. Tan of 30 was what value from our previous lesson? That was root 3 on 3. So we have it as root 3 on 3. All divided by tan of 60 is still negative root 3. And then this time around, the denominator is minus because positive times negative would be minus. Tan 30 has been seen as root 3 on 3. Now you have some certs here, so you need to actually um, add and then simplify where necessary. So this time around, let's try to be smart enough. You can write it as this, minus root 3 plus root 3 on 3 all divided by minus root 3 
minus root 3 on 3. Then if you, because if you want to stick not to use any calculator, then you have to do everything manually. So LCM here will be what? What's the LCM? Yeah, will it be three or root three? I'm saying no, the LCM between this and that is mm -hmm. is three because this is over one. Three goes into one goes into three three times times that will get negative three root three here. Then plus three goes into itself one times root three will get root three. So we simplify the first numerator. And that's what we are getting. Coming here, divided by LCM here will be what? Three. This over one. One goes into three. Three times that. We have negative root three. And then three goes into three. One times that. We have negative root three. Are we okay? Here, oh, times that. So, three, negative 3 root 3 and then minus root 3. That's what we have. So, finally, what do we have at the numerator here? We are obtaining an answer of what, please? Like 2 root 3 over 3. So, we have negative root 2 root 3 over 3 dividing. Yes, what about the side? Negative 4. Negative 4 three. root 3 on negative. 3. Now, two fractions dividing will become multiplication. So we have negative 2 root 3 on 3 times 3 over negative 4 root 3, right? Yes, sir. Now, 3 will go into itself. Root 3 will cancel itself. So, what are we left? Negative 2 root 3 over negative 4 root 3. Which is the same as negative 2 over negative 4. And final breakdown will become what? 1 over 2. 1 over 2. So, it means that when you simplify tan 300, and then minus one tan of 150 all divided by tan 120 plus tan of 150 the final answer is half and remember we did not use a calculator we had to do everything manually please are we okay Yes, sir. All right. Can you can you program on your calculator to cross check whether you are we have gotten it right? Just program everything. So how do we program it? Bring the division sign. That is box over box from your calculator. Just bring that one first. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Then you program at the numerator tan of 300. Tan 300. Because there is a bracket, you close a bracket. Then minus tan of 150. Then you close a bracket as well. Then shift your, use the navigation key to shift the cursor to the denominator. Then you program tan of 120. You can see that there is a bracket open, so you need to close that bracket. Then plus tan of 150. There's a bracket open, so you need to close that bracket. Then now you press equal to.
Please, have you been able to do that? Yes, half. You had half. And you see how the calculator has generated the final answer straight half. This is what goes into getting the half. This is the steps that gives you the half. You need to take it one after the other. Please, are we all clear? Are we all clear, please? Yes, sir. All right. So let me leave these questions with you for you to try your hands on. I'm giving you some set of questions to try your hands on and give me a feedback. So then again, the same preamble without using tables or calculator evaluate the following. So we have number one as cos of 210 degrees, number two as tan of 135 degrees, number three as sine of negative 60 degrees. I want you to see what, I want you to help me with this answer. It's a special question altogether. Number four, I have one plus cos of 240 degrees all divided by one minus cos of 240 degrees. Then the last question, number five, is tan of 300 degrees plus tan of 210 degrees all divided by 1 minus tan of 300 multiplying tan of 210 degrees. You know this means multiplication. Two tan ratios multiplying. So that's what we have there. So I want you to take your time and then get these questions answered for me. If you have any challenge, you can inbox me and whatever assistance you need, I'll give it to you. Please, in our next lesson, we are going to deal with the graph of the trig ratios. The graph of the trig ratios. So I'll be very glad for you to get your graph books along so that we draw it together. The graph of trig ratios yeah so that's what we'll be doing in our next lesson so get your grab books ready for that thank you so much for joining the lesson it's a great privilege coming your way with another interesting lesson in trigonometry thanks for your submissions and your contributions god richly bless you for also supporting my youtube channel to reach 1.5k have a great day and God bless you. Bye-bye.